Step one with the electronics is going to be installing the pickups into the body. So these are not like strap pickups. They don't like have springs or mount to the pick guard. They just have these little dog ears with screws for them and they actually go straight into the cavity. So uh, I got these vintage 65 pickups, which are supposed to be like spec match for 60s old jazz masters. They're kind of low output. I did measure the output of both of these, and it seems like the bridge and neck pickup have exactly the same output. So I don't actually know if they're wired differently or if it's, you know, if they're the same exact part pretty much just with uh, reversed uh, ground and hot wires. Anyway, though, um, here's the circuit diagram that came with these, and I have all of these other parts uh, from a kit that I bought ready. Um, and you can see that the only real way to tell these apart, they don't actually even show it on this, but there is a blue dot on this one, which this is the neck pickup, and then there's a red dot on this one, which you can see really faintly right here, and this is the bridge pickup. And you can kind of tell by looking at the wiring diagram, which of course is, it's reversed from the guitar because you're supposed to be looking at the pickup from the back when you wire this in. But you can tell by where the wires are that if this was going in, you know, like this, this route here on the wiring diagram is this. And you can see that the way that the pickup is, the, the white wires on top going into that cavity. And if I look at this uh, neck pickup, you can see that that matches. And then vice versa for the bridge pickup, you see that the, the white and black are two different sides. So you can't tell them apart that way. The covers are the same. Um, to mount these in, I'm just going to take one of the pickup covers, basically, and uh, slot it into the pickup position, the route, and push it down, make sure it fits, which it's a little bit tight with its shielding. I'm kind of scraping some shielding off, so I might need to redo that really quick. But I'm going to push that all the way down. And then I'll get a drill and I'll just go through each of these uh, dog ears and just drill a hole really straight vertically up and down. And uh, the screws to actually mount these do come with these pickups and they just look like this. And then we'll, we'll have the pickups mounted in with the wires facing the right way and all that. And uh, then we'll start working on the electronics that actually slot into the pick guard. So before I get started on the electronics, uh, I wanted to go over the saga of the pick guards because... Uh, there's something you should know if you're planning to do this with a warmth body. So in the very first video I uploaded, I think I showed uh, this pickguard, which is sort of like a really tacky fake abalone kind of pattern. I got this really cheap. It's from like Amazon, just some generic Chinese manufacturer made this. And uh, if you notice, when I put this over the guitar, the neck pocket fits and the bridge posts fit but uh, if you're looking at this, and we'll give a slightly better view here, the pickups are actually out of alignment. You can see that this edge of wood doesn't match. And actually, even the neck pickup, it's, it's actually a little bit, the cut is too far down slightly for the neck pickup. So apparently, Warmoth's uh, Jazzmaster bodies are not exactly to Fender's specs. The pickups are slightly closer together. It's not a huge amount. It's like five, six millimeters, eight millimeters, something like that, less than a, less than a centimeter. And, uh, you know, you could go about trying to fix that a couple of ways. So I could have chosen to try to actually route the, the wood body a little bit so that I kind of cut out a bit down here and maybe cut up a bit there. And then you would just slide the pickups a little bit further up. The cavities are really tight. They're actually like fitted exactly to a Jazzmaster pickup with the normal route. I didn't want to do that just because the risk of screwing up is high, especially up here around the neck pocket. Like if you route a little too far, you'll wind up taking that off. I don't have templates and stuff. So uh, the next thing I did was actually order a pickguard from Mormon because I figured that would fit. What I didn't know about that pickguard is that the shape is a little bit different. And uh, also I, I couldn't get the exact black and white color. This one's blue and the blue doesn't exactly match the body, which uh, whatever, it's a little bit of a bummer. But the Wormuth pickguard fits perfectly. As you can see, the pickup routes are very, very solid, like I'll be able to fit everything through and I've already checked that. But it doesn't wrap around the uh, bridge posts. And I, I don't know, it's really minor, it's just cosmetic. Uh, but you can see that the look of it is just a little bit different than like an actual Jazzmaster if you look at what one's supposed to look like. So I was a little bit bummed out by that. I didn't like the color and the way it matches the finish. It might be really hard to tell in the video here, but it's like... Uh, like a redder shade of blue, whereas this is a, a greener shade of blue, uh, and I, I didn't like that. So I wound up doing a bunch of drawings and making these tracings, and I sent them to a company 
that does custom pick guards. Uh, this is not the tracing they actually received. This is just a, a practice one. And I gave them all these elaborate instructions on what to do with the pick guard to make it exactly match. And I actually sent them both of these pick guards as reference. And they said it would take two weeks and they would make a custom one that fit. And I, I told them to contact me if they had any questions and they never contacted me. And lo and behold, they sent one back and guess what? It doesn't fit. Um, the, the pickups are spaced a little bit better, but still not exact. And even if I were to like file the pick guard and leave a little bit of like a gap around the pickup, it would be like a really big gap. It'd be like that big. Um, that's kind of a bummer. The other thing you'll notice is that uh, the Wormuth pickguard, the switch hole for the actual like toggle for the pickup switch is, is like positioned a little bit differently than like an actual fender. It's like further in and it might be a little easier to hit when playing, I guess, but I don't know. It probably isn't that big of a difference. Anyway, this took eight weeks to get turned around. I might go through the process of returning it and trying to get a replacement that fits, but they didn't send me my drawing back, so I can't exactly point to it and say, hey, you didn't space this right. So I don't even know if I'll get a refund on it. And uh, it took so long that I'm just no longer willing to wait. I could, I guess, buy some tools and try to cut my own and, and get cheap material, but I'd have to make practice pieces and do all kinds of work, and I am just not willing to do that at this point. It's been too long. So I'm just going to use this warm with one and live with the color. And maybe someday in the future I'll, I'll replace it and fix all the screw holes and just put a new one on there and, and put all the electronics back through it. But I still think it looks good, and it's mostly a cosmetic difference anyway, so we're going to go with this one. Be aware, uh, if you buy a Wormuth body, the spacing is different. I may try to like uh, upload or put something in the description of this video where I'll talk about this spacing and try to provide some kind of drawing or something with, with markings on it. Maybe it'll help somebody out if they're trying to do this in the future. Right, with the pickups in, uh, I can now adjust the height really easily just by tightening these screws down later once we have the action of the guitar set up. And uh, I'm ready to move on to the uh, next step, which is firing the back of the pickguard up. So chances are, if you're watching this, you're already familiar with how a Jazzmaster is wired, but in case you're not, basically there's two different sides of this pickguard that actually have separate circuits. So you have the two pickups in the middle, and on the left, you kind of have the standard guitar circuit. You have this input jack. I got a really nice one that has the double-sided grips uh, for both signal and ground, which is nice. It'll grip the plug really securely. And then you have a tone and volume potentiometer. Tone down here, volume up here. Both of these are just one meg. I got identical parts. I maybe could have gotten like an audio taper. I've seen some circuits have an audio taper for the tone control instead of a linear. Whatever, I didn't. And then I have a 0.033 uh, capacitor, microfarad capacitor, uh, as a tone filter for the tone knob. Then there's a switch. This is pretty standard. It'll control uh, between the top pickup, neck, and then both pickups, and then bridge pickup with this. On the right side of this circuit is something completely different. This is called the rhythm circuit. And there's actually this switch here, which toggles left and right like this. And it will uh, completely cut all of this stuff out of the circuit and it'll route only the neck pickup in regardless of what you have set on this switch and then you have completely separate tone and volume potentiometers which attach to this harness and have little uh, roller knobs these like knurled knobs to control them and the volume on the top there is one meg and then the bottom one is 50k so it's a different value of uh, pop and then there's also a different filter capacitor in this case a 0.02 microfarad so it's a really interesting circuit design. Honestly, I probably won't use this rhythm circuit too much. It's designed to make the guitar really, really like uh, muted and kind of like a warm uh, sound with a lot of treble taken out of it. Um, and for jazz, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna put this all together now. I'll just install each of the pieces of hardware where they're supposed to go. And then we'll work on wiring everything the way it's supposed to be, at least for the portion attached to the pickguard. And then we'll get the body back and wire the pickups into the circuit. This is all of the hardware fully installed, all of the components. I had a little bit of trouble fitting these roller pots in because the holes weren't quite wide enough. So I ended up filing to try and get those through and they're still a little bit tighter than they probably should be when you turn them, but they're not bad. So I think that's okay. Um, finally ready to solder this. 
So uh, I've got the wiring diagram there. I'm gonna start by just doing this circuit here, attaching the ground of the uh, jack, the back of each of the pots, uh, putting the filter capacitor in, and then going up through this uh, main toggle switch. I'll probably speed through a lot of this. I'm not really an expert at soldering. You probably don't want to imitate my technique anyway. And then I'll kind of review the circuit once everything's connected according to this diagram. And I'll try to make it really neat and use like tape like the way they show with all the wire routing. Um, anyway, yeah, this is just regular uh, lead solder. Uh, it's 37% lead, I think, and 63% tin. So eutectic solder should be a little bit easier to work with. Uh, anyway. Let's go. So I uh, wanted to point out a couple of things here as this is uh, approaching completion. For one, this switch, right? Well, if you see what it does, when you switch it to down, it pushes up and that disconnects this top set and connects only the bottom of these like kind of long tabs that go through this sandwich of uh, resistant material. And that engages this bottom part of the circuit, so that's going to be where the uh, bridge pickup goes. And if you push it up, you get the opposite, where it disengages this bottom portion and only this is in contact. So this top tab with the red is going to be a path that involves the neck pickup. Uh, and then if you have it neutral, uh, it'll actually be hitting both pickups at the same time. And that's where this blue line that goes through. And you can actually see that if you wanted it to do something different, if you wanted middle to not engage both, you could only tie one of these two lines together but I have the blue wire, I don't know if you can see on the camera, jumped between the two pins on the inside. And then this big thick middle part is ground, so that's going to ground. Um, this is a pretty complex circuit too. You can see how much wiring this has and it's kind of hanging all over. I've been sizing these, uh, kind of thinking of the channel, because the, the guitar has a route that's like here, where my finger is. And so I'm, I'm probably going to take all these wires, they're all the exact right length to follow a, a diagonal along this, and I'll, I'll tape them when all the wires are in place, and we'll get kind of like a neat uh, harnessed kind of thing that we can just drop straight in uh, after we hook up the pickups anyway. I'm very nearly done here, and you can see everything that I've done. I was really hoping to have enough length in these pickup leads to have me set the pick guard down next to the guitar without disconnecting anything. So I, I might just extend this one really quick, and it's it's about to get connected in to the switch in the upper right here, which you might not be able to see, I guess. There. Anyway, um, it's a pretty complex circuit. I managed to keep things kind of neat, so I, I sort of used this, this electrical tape to tape down the wiring in a couple of places so that it'll line up better in this channel. There's one other thing that I need to do before I uh, uh, put this together. And that is, you notice the trim plate's not installed. So I have been routing all of the grounds that say to just go to various points on the shield back to the to the ground that actually goes out in the uh, jack. Um, I've checked continuity in this, and it's pretty good, but, like, I'm just a little bit worried, you know, like, the actual Fender guitars, they still have, like, like a metal shield that's actually, like, put into the body. And if, if, you know, for some reason there's a little gap or something, or over time this breaks down or the adhesive goes bad and parts come up, I don't want the guitar to quit working. So I've routed everything there. I still do want to ground this, so I'm going to put one connection between this and the body cavity just to make sure that the shielding is at least attempted to be grounded. And then the other thing is this trim plate, I'm going to put a wire that hangs up over the lip so that when the tremolo plate comes down, uh, it'll pinch that wire against the metal plate, and that'll ground the strings, which will help to make the guitar less noisy. you got to do that, too. The way I'm going to do that is there's actually a hole you probably can't see. It's down in here, and it runs between this section of the body and the trem cavity. So I'm just going to poke a wire through and have it kind of, I'll use tape or something to hang it up over the lip, and I'll put the trim plate down in and install that as well. And then I'll wire everything together, put it on, and we'll see if it actually works or not. And uh, if not, I'll have to troubleshoot. So you can see there's a wire poking up here, and that runs through this hole. 
And then I have a point of solder right here down in the cavity. And that's also connecting to the backs of the pots. So everything should be grounded. I can actually check all that and it, it look, looks pretty good. Uh, you know, different parts of the cavity still work. If I touch this wire with some part of the cavity, it should work. Yup, and back of the pot. So everything is grounded now, so this plate should ground the strings. Um, so I'm gonna screw that in. Uh, so I'll film this part and talk about it. I'll then flip the thing over and we'll go plug this into the amplifier. I, I'm not gonna actually drill the pickguard screws or anything yet because I don't know if it works and I might just have to take it apart again. But we'll see. Uh, hopefully I wired everything right. It's pretty complicated. I'm a little bit nervous that I did not, but we'll see. So, moment of truth. Did I wire this correctly? Um, so I've got the switch set in neutral and rhythm circuit off, so both pickups should make noise and we're connected to the amplifier. So let's see. Yep. Yep. So we'll flip to just the neck. A little bit of hum because it's not hum canceling anymore. That makes sense. Yep. And nothing for the bridge. Go to bridge and not neck, so nothing here. Yep. All right, so at least one half of the circuit is wired correctly. Now we'll check the other one. So this should be neck pickup only. So bridge does nothing. Neck does something. I'll test the volume knob too, just to see. Yep. Quieter till it's muted. Guess I should test the, uh, the regular circuit volume as well. So. There you go. All wired. So. Uh, nothing left to do but screw the pick guard in and assemble this thing. It's a little bit buzzier uh, when you have it on just one coil uh, than I hoped, but I guess I, have, I do have the gain and volume turned up pretty high on this amp, so maybe that's just normal. Maybe I could put a few more jumpers inside the cavity or something. All right, we're really close now. The pick guard is now sitting really nice and flat. I did have to move a few wires around and I put the neck into the pocket just temporarily just to make sure that I've got this like lined up really well because it'll shift around just a little bit, you can see. And I kind of want it to be like tight against the neck so there's no gap. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put another set of markings on this drill and we'll drill out all of the uh, holes for the pick guard screws and we'll start putting this together and then we'll put the neck on. So I'm almost ready to bolt the neck onto this, but before I do that, I wanted to make a decision on something. And uh, what that is, is whether or not I would be using a shin. So I've got in here just this Stumac shin. I think this is a quarter of a degree one. It sticks out just a little bit, so I'll probably sand the edge of this so it doesn't kind of poke out. Um, but I've been testing it with and without it in. Um, I guess I'll just show you. If I put the neck down into the pocket right now, with the shin. Um, and then I take the bridge, and this bridge, the way it works is that you just adjust the height with these two little uh, pointed screws that come out of the left and right sides. Incidentally, if you're wondering what size Allen key for that, it is a five mils, like 0 .00, or 0 0.05. I guess that's not mil, but um, yeah, 0 0.05 of an inch. And that puts into these screws and then you can pull these in or out, but there's kind of a limit. You see, I, I barely have any screw sticking out of this. I've got it almost all the way down. And uh, what I was checking was just, could I get the action playable without the shin? And what I found was the action was quite high. And I haven't adjusted the truss rod or anything yet, so you know maybe it would have gotten a little bit better. But when I put the shin in, I'm able to measure the height going over the bridge at this current adjusted depth at the uh, 12th fret, and it's only 460 fourths, which is where I want it to be when I actually set the guitar up. Now, I, I'm still gonna have to adjust the truss rod and do all that stuff during the setup, and I might need to move this bridge up or down, but I think it's a better idea to put the shin in just to make sure it's playable. So I'm gonna slide that between, I'll file it down just a little bit, and then we'll bolt the neck on. 
So I, I went ahead and darkened the edge of the uh, shim with a with a black sharpie, which I didn't show on the camera. And now we're ready to bolt this on, which is awkward enough to do, let alone film. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a better way to do this that people do, or if I'm doing something terribly wrong. But I've got this pressed really tightly down into the pocket, and I'm just going to go ahead and do these screws one by one. And uh, screws are pre-waxed because I definitely want them to cut in really nicely and come out, uh, come out clean, not strip out. So I used plenty of wax. Right, that one's having a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, make sure not to strip the screws. Uh, maple's a tough wood, so the first time you're going into this, I, I maybe should have even cleaned out the threads just a little bit on the inside. Well, not threads, but pilot holes. Anyway, I'll finish the rest of this, and then we'll have the neck bolted on. So all the strings are uh, on this now. Um, just finished stringing it up. It's pretty good. There's no sitaring sounds or anything, and the strings clear the back of the bridge, which I've heard can be a problem. And uh, they're not touching these screws, which I've heard can also be a problem. So I think that the shim worked out. I, I guess I'm probably going to put the setup and sound demo in a separate video, and this will be kind of the finale of this one. Um, I'm probably going to need to have a guitar shop fix the nut. I don't have nut files and slots, and I don't want to try and do it with non-standard tools. But some of the nut slots, either I accidentally filled them in with finish and I can't get it out, or they were just never really cut that deeply and they expected you to adjust it. Um... And I'm not going to wait and order nut files, I'll just take it in. But the kind of uh, finishing touches on this thing, I have this uh, set of knobs. It, it also includes a, a cover for the uh, whammy bar, the actual tremolo arm. And uh, it's kind of more like a matching color to this sort of cream on the pick guards. I think they call it like vintage white or something like that. But uh, I'm going to put the knobs on. So, very, very exciting. Uh... The way I like to do these knobs, or at least the way I should have them, is probably to have uh, the, the number, and in this case I've got them turned all the way up so they're on 10, facing so that it faces me, roughly. Like if you think about uh, if I was sitting down holding the guitar, I can look down and see what the number is. And that might not be the standard Fender way, but that's how I'm going to do it. So, cool. And, uh... Let's do these two parallel with each other. Yeah, look at that. Bingo. That looks really cool. And I guess for the uh, trim arm, which is over here, I will remove this white one. And we'll put on this cool vintage white one. Which is a little bit tighter. There we go. Have that on too. Pop that in and that is the guitar. Pretty exciting. I, I think this turned out looking just great. So I'll, I'll kind of walk through the full setup in more detail. I'm probably just going to set it up according to strat specs uh, once I get the nut fixed up. And uh, then this thing will be ready for a sound demo. And I'm going to go mess with it now. So, cool. Stay tuned.